salvation bring you praise. Let the words that I speak and the thoughts that I think bring glory, not shame, unto your name. Uh -huh. Let the words of my mouth bring you praise. Let my meditation bring you praise. Let the words that I speak and the thoughts that I think bring glory, not shame, unto your name. Come on, come on, let the words, let the words of my mouth bring you praise. Uh -huh. Let my meditation bring you praise. Let the words that I speak and the thoughts that I think bring glory, not shame, unto your name. One more time, let the words, the words of my mouth bring you praise. Let my meditation bring you praise. Let the words that I speak and the thoughts that I You ever wondered what actors and actresses do when they have to get paid really fast for a movie?
My goodness. God bless you, everybody. Man, it's good to have powerful music on. I just thank God for this is the day that the Lord has made. We do rejoice and we're glad in it. We're grateful for it. How are you? Glad to see you. Oh, we thank God. Oh, man, what a blessed day. Hallelujah. 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 What a blessed day. What a blessed day. This is the day that the Lord has made. I do rejoice and I'm glad in it. I'm grateful for it. Beloved, I'm ready to get to this word because I'm excited always about the opportunity to talk with you, to impart with you, to bless the Lord with you. And Lord God, I know it's a blessing by God for me to be here because I thank God for every one of you. I don't take it lightly that you join us for Midday Manor. I am thankful for every one of you. I mean, there's a plethora. There are a myriad of other things you could be doing, but you stop by. Some stay for a while, some stay the whole thing. But um, I just want to say on behalf of Light Builders Church, thank you for being a part of Midday Manor. Midday Manor is a ministry of the Light Builders Church, and uh, we are located here in the great city of Baltimore, Maryland. And I'm your host, Bishop J. Charles Carrington, Jr. I walk in the office of Apostle. So if you see Apostle on my title, beloved, I do walk in that office as well. I am a bishop. I have pastors and bishops that I cover, and um, I do so with joy. I didn't ask them to let me cover them. They asked me to be their covering, and I say thank God for helping me to have that grace to do that. I love every one of you, and on behalf of my wife, we say from the Carrington household, the palatial studios of the Carrington household, welcome to Midday Manor. Welcome to Midday Manor. I love coming through this venue, but it's time for the word now. Can I pray for you? Can we pray together? Father, in the name of Jesus, I want to thank you that this day you've blessed us to have life and that more abundantly. You set your spirit upon us. You put your word in us, and you're so faithful. Now, Father, throughout this time we spend together, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight. There's somebody that needs you. There's somebody that needs you. There's somebody that needs you. Lord, I cannot tell unless you tell me by word of knowledge or by revelation what that need is. But I know that today watching somebody or by rebroadcast, somebody needs you. So Lord, I ask you to let your glory rest upon all that hear this word, all that stop by for the duration. Lord, let your blessing rest, rule, and abide. Thank you that every need is met according to your riches and glory. All grace abounds towards us so that we may have sufficiency in all things and we are bound unto every good work. Lord, you be glorified, you be magnified. Meet the needs of your people today. And Lord, destroy every work of the enemy. And for this I say thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Beloved, that music you're hearing in the background is a compilation CD of great gospel, jazz, Christian jazz. I usually play for Victory Outreach in Anaheim, California. But my uncle, my uncle Reggie, uh, my mother's youngest brother, made this CD for me and gave it to me. And uh, I just want to say hats off to you, Uncle Reggie. Oh, man, it's a great CD. And I love you, man. I appreciate you down there at Refuge Church in Southern Maryland, Charles, Charles County. And I thank you, man of God. I think he's a faithful deacon. Him and his wife serve in that wonderful church, Refuge Church, down there. And I appreciate it. They're doing a great work for God. And I appreciate it. And uh, you enjoy that CCD. Say so in the uh, in the chat. I'm enjoying it. Amen. Because I love good music behind me while I'm teaching the word. That's just my style uh, for this uh, venue. Beloved, again, thank God to everybody that is sown. We're still receiving seeds from people that are sowing precious seed into the life and the endeavor of Life Builders Church. We are purchasing land, and the Lord has blessed us with a great opportunity to spread the gospel, to build the kingdom, to take holdings for the body and the kingdom of God. So um, you can continue to sow. My God, I'm not going to tell you to stop because... I realize that is the main way to get a harvest. And for every seed that's been sown, I've spoken a quick turnaround, an exponential, exponential hundredfold return 
You can sow by Cash App or Dollar Sign Life Builders Church. That's capital L B C Life Builders Church. Someone sowed this morning. <clears throat> Matter of fact, several seeds came in this morning from people that are blessed. I want to shout out our full gospel family um, who have been sowing and have blessed us from around the country. I want to shout out my AIM family. Seeds came in this morning from some of my AIM brothers and sisters. Our organization that Apostle I.V. Hilliard, my father and my pastor, and his wonderful wife, my mother, Dr. Bridget Hilliard, are over. And, um, you know, I thank God for friends, brothers and sisters that have lavishly blessed us and sold and continue to sow into this. Thank you all. To thank every partner of Life Builders Church who continues to sow, not just for BAP, but as we're building our faith, as we're agreeing with each other, and as we're praying with their tithe and offering, their, 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 their blessing and being a part of the ministry every week, every day. And they're the real backbone. And I appreciate you, Life Builders Church. Now, let's get into the word. We are in lesson number four. And it is the parable of the sword. What an appropriate word. What an appropriate segue. Amen. Let's get there. Matthew chapter 13, verse 1 through 23. And also we're going to pick it up uh, in Mark chapter 4, verse 1 through 20. I'm going to read expeditiously because this text is kind of lengthy, but it needs to be read in its entirety for fullness of understanding. Matthew 1, uh, 13, 1 through 23. Ready? Let's go. The same day Jesus out of the house, he went out of the house. Let's say it properly. The same day when Jesus out of the house and sat by the seaside and great multitudes were gathered together unto him so that he went up into a ship and sat and the whole multitude stood together with him on the shore. And he spake many things unto them in parables saying, Behold, a sower went forth to sow. And when he sowed, some seed fell by the wayside, and the fowls came and devoured them. Some fell upon stony places where they had not much earth, and forthwith they sprung up because they had no deepness of earth. And when the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprung up and choked them. But other fell into good ground and brought forth fruit, some in a hundredfold, some sixtyfold, some thirtyfold. Hmm. Who have ears to hear, let them hear. And the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? He answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you the know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. For whosoever hath to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance. Whosoever shall have not from him shall be taken away, even that he hath. Therefore speak I to them in parables, Jesus talking. Because they seeing see not, and hearing they hear not, neither do they understand. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, which saith, By hearing ye shall hear, and shall not understand, and seeing ye shall see, and shall not perceive. For the people's heart is waxed gross, and their ears are dull of hearing. God have mercy. And their eyes they have closed, lest at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears, and should be un and should understand with their heart, and should be converted. And I should heal them. But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. For verily I say unto you, that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which you see, and have not seen them, and to hear those things which ye hear, and have not heard them. Have ye therefore the parable of the sword? Hear it now. When one heareth the word of the kingdom, and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one, 
and catcheth away that which was sown in his heart. This is he which received seed by the wayside. But he that received the seed into stony places, the same as he that heareth the word, and anon with joy receiveth it. Yet hath he not root in himself, but dureth for a while. And when tribulation or persecution arises because of the word, and by this he is offended. He also that receives seed among the thorns is that heareth the word, and the care of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word. God have mercy. And he becometh unfruitful. But he that receiveth seed into the good ground is he that heareth the word and understandeth it, which also beareth fruit and bringeth forth some an hundred, some sixty, some thirty fold. The same text my God has talked about in Mark's gospel, chapter 4, verse 1 through 20. And I'm not going to read all of that. You can read it, but it is a co-text of the scripture in Matthew 13, talking about the parable of the sower. Now let's set a few things in front of you so you can understand. First of all, let's deal with the 30-fold, 60-fold, and 100-fold. Jesus explains for all of our understanding that the seed is the word of God. How that seed benefits your life is directly related to your level of application of the word. I got to say that again. How that seed benefits your life is directly related to your application of the word. Since Jesus established that the seed is the word. Okay, he said that. He explained that when there's seed, some bring forth harvest, 30-fold, 60-fold, 100-fold. How I apply the word determines the harvest I bring forward. Y'all have to hear me. Some people think that the enemy is going to uh, just let you sit there and not test what you hear. Beloved, let me tell you, everything you hear, you'll be tested on. Every word that the Lord speaks, you'll be tested on. Don't think that you won't. You will. You'll be tested to see if you received it. So Jesus addresses that. Jesus addresses how the first set of seed fell on the wayside. I mean, it didn't go in the ground. It just indiscriminately fell by the wayside. Fell by the wayside. And you know the devil cometh immediately like a hungry bird and eats that seed up. You don't have evidence of it any longer. It's been taken. Take it. God have mercy. Lord have mercy. Then Jesus said, when you hear the word and uh, the word has come unto you and uh, you don't understand it, that's when the wicked one comes and catches it away. Okay? The wicked one comes. You don't understand. You, you sit there and you're listening and your mind is not engaged you're not really there i mean you're physically present but you don't care to hear what you're hearing you you tune it out can i say that you tune it out how many people have ever been to church let's not even say that yet let's say how many have been in the conversation and at some point you don't hear a thing the person say i mean your ears catch it but your heart don't receive it you tune it out you tune it out <laughs> mothers have learned to tune out certain things you know um 
I, I watched my, my my wife as our children grew, and they didn't tune our children out. But, um, you know, at the child, mom, 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 mom. About 20 times, uh, you like, I don't hear it anymore. <laughs> oh, God. Fathers, you know, I, I understand that because, you know, just over and over, mom, 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 mom. I mean, you tune it out. Dad, 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 dad. You don't learn the art of tuning it out. It'll run you crazy. You just simply answer your child. Say, what is it, baby? What can I do for you? I want to get out. Sometimes you have to put the child in the playpen so you can get some work done. <clears throat> Excuse me, around the house. Uh, <laughs> sometimes you want to get some stuff done and baby wants to run everywhere and you just need about a good 10 minutes to make a call or to clean something up. And, you know, you might want the baby to, or the child, the toddler to just be in the pen for a minute. And sometimes the child starts screaming. And uh, I've seen mothers, you know, uh, console the child. Oh, it's going to be all right. I'm coming. I'll get you out. Just give me a few minutes. I got to take care of some. All the while they're cleaning. So you know it is possible to tune stuff out that you really don't want to hear. And uh, I'm not saying this example in a negative way, but I do say it in this true way that some people go to church. They go because mama made them go. They go because the wife made them go. They go because the husband made them go. And they just as tuned out. They just as not engaged as you may want to say it. And that's dangerous because faith grows by hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing the word of God. And you have committed almost spiritual suicide when you're sitting in the house of God and tune out the word, especially if you're one that too tends to like sermons that itch your ears. Jesus talked about it to the apostles. And in the last days, there will come people that having itching ears who only want to hear what they want to hear. I often use this analogy. If blood is shooting from my arm, from an artery, shooting, just coming out, please don't tell me I have a scratch. Please don't tell me, oh, it's nothing. Please apply a tourniquet or I will bleed out and bleed to death. Hmm. Many people want you to leave them alone and let the seed fall by the wayside. Many people don't want to hear the truth. I read the other day, as I was looking at Facebook because I like to sometimes look at the posts of people and the responses. And Folk have a misconception of the grace of God. Now, somebody responded that God is too good to send you to hell. And God is too good to... Um, to uh, judge you or to say something about you wrong. He's too loving. Beloved, that is not Bible. That is some hybrid message of grace that is not scripturally uh, totally sustained. Yes, God is good. Yes, he loves you. But what do you do with the scripture that says the wages of sin is death? But the gift of God is eternal life. What is the gift of God? The Holy Ghost, his word, the power of God walking in your life. Because Jesus said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Grace is a gift. We have an advocate if we sin that we can come to God who won't throw us away. He's more interested in forgiving you than you realize. Because sin separate you from the greatness of God. The grace of God is him giving us what we do not deserve. I don't deserve your grace. And his mercy is him not giving me what I do deserve. So for those of us that are in and I'm not even going to say what I'll get ready to say because I'm not trying to insult you. But for those of us that are high into the hybrid grace, that think that just as God is loving, he's also omniscient, all-powerful, you know, omnipotent, 
omniscient, all knowing, and I'm the president everywhere at once. For those that forget the fact that just as powerful as God is, God is also the God that will judge your sin. He said it in his word. He didn't say, oh, my bad, I'm removing it. And see, that's what happens when seed falls by the wayside. Folk hear it according to a paradigm that's lied to them. I mean, let's be honest about it. Nobody wants to hear of judgment. Nobody wants to hear of the fact that you have to stand one day before God and give account for the deed done in the flesh. But that's what the Bible says. What need is there to be saved? What need is there to be, as the scripture talks about, converted? And that word converted means to build a new model of something using new material. So when it's done, you'll know it's a conversion van, but it's totally different than it was. When you're converted in Christ, folk will know it's you, but you're a new you. Mm, that's why I love 2 Corinthians 5, 17. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Oh, all things are passed away, and behold, all things are become new. When I got saved, when I got filled with the Holy Ghost, I still looked like me. But the me that I looked like was changed. I know some people quote, I looked at my hands and my hands look new. I looked at my feet and they did too. I started to walk and I had a new walk. Started to talk and I had a new talk. Beloved, some aspects change immediately. And they are the majority of aspects that change over time. That's why you can't allow the seed of the word to just fall by the wayside. Then the scripture talks about the seed that falls on stony places. The same is the one that hears that word and receives it with joy. How many of us, and I'm not getting on nobody, you keep doing what you're doing, keep coming to church, just keep coming. But why stand up and break your mug when there's a profound point made with your notepad in one hand and a pencil in the other or pen or your arms folded, you you know the church looks we give, and yet you go out and don't apply it. Oh, this word is so precious. How could anybody hear profundity and truth from the word of God and just let it just sit on top of a rock? I've actually looked at this, and uh, a seed will grow with little or no dirt. I've seen seeds grow in shallow dirt, I've seen seeds grow, if it were, on rocks, but they don't last long. The harvest, the plant that comes up, has no deepness of earth. You can brush it away. You can brush it away, and and, and, and it won't stand. It won't stay. It's like a weed. So let's correlate seed that does not have deepness of earth produces weeds, and weeds are cumbersome. Weeds choke out the good harvest, and weeds basically have no value that I know of. I've never seen a bird eat a weed. I, I rarely, I don't think I've ever seen a cow eat a weed. Cows can discern from good grass and bad grass. You know, birds can discern poison um, berries and, and harvests that come up. You no, know, if a bird can discern, what's our problem? How can we let any word that God speaks fall on stony places and not have much depth of earth? You have no root, the scripture said, Jesus said. So when tribulation coming, because I said in the beginning of the lesson, every word you hear, there will be a test. Uh, that's just the way life is. Jesus wasn't exempt from tests. How in the world can we think we're going to be exempt from tests? I mean, my God, Jesus came out, out of the Jordan after being baptized by his cousin John. The Godhead shows up 
Father in creation spoke, said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Not a separate God, but the Father God. Jesus is being baptized. John said, I can't do it. You should be baptizing me, basically. But Jesus said, no, it fulfills all righteousness. Then the Holy Ghost in the form of a dove shows up. And, uh, you know, all the Godhead was there. The Bible says it clearly that in Jesus dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. So after that wonderful revelation, Jesus come up out the Jordan and is led, look at this, led of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tried or tempted by the devil. Now, come on, come on, come on. How do you think you're going to escape? I, I know I, I haven't escaped. Every word I preach, I'm tested on. Every word I hear from those who feed into my life, I'm tested on. So you can't escape, beloved. That's where it is. And that's when you know the sea has deepness of earth. Because when the trial come, because it will. And when the tribulation arises, because it will. And you're tested because you have no deepness of earth. You'll, you'll find a way out of being one that receives seed. Then there's this next category that there's seed that is received among thorns. And Jesus was very clear in this description. He said that the cares of this life uh, choke it out. The seedfulness of riches choke it out. And that person becomes unfruitful. So at some point, the seed actually took root. Hallelujah. At some point, the seed actually began to bring a harvest, glory. But the, 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 the distractions came. The distractions came and choked out the seed. Oh, we fight distractions every day. We fight so that we won't get distracted. Do I have a witness? Somebody put in that chat, Bishop, you're not alone. I fight too. Distractions on the left of me. Distractions on the right of me. Now, I'm going to make a statement, and I pray this is revelatory to you. Distractions have more of an effect when you feed it. Distractions come. They come without notice. They come without invitation. But they have more of an effect and impact. Catch my words. They have more of an effect, E-F-F-E-C-T, an impact, I-M-P-A-C-T, when you feed it. So when things happen and you decide to take out your phone and film it, <laughs> fight, fight, fight. And instead of you keep walking, or calling the police to come before somebody get hurt, bad, or killed. You want to put it on YouTube. You've been distracted. And I've seen folk standing in the middle of the street, <laughs> taping something, recording something on your phone. Everybody's a journalist now. You know that, right? And uh, car come by about to hit them. They don't even see. I've seen people walking down the street with the earphones plugged in, talking on the cell phone or listening to music, almost get hit and run over by a bus. While you're walking on that street, you don't need to be distracted because every driver is not a good driver and every pedestrian is not a, a good pedestrian. <laughs> can, can we admit that? Can you say, I cannot put myself in harm's way with these distractions? You are in charge of the impact and the effect that distractions have over your life. You're in charge. I, I, I am yet to find how to stop distractions from coming at you, but I have found how to keep them from having impact and effect. So beloved, Jesus talked about those seeds that fell among thorns and the cares of this life the deceitfulness of riches choke out these things. Why did he say deceitfulness of riches? 
Riches is not a bad thing, but when your riches are your Lord, you can be deceived. When your possessions have you instead of you having them, you can be deceived. Beloved, I have learned in my walk that I must live by God's economy and not mine. I am overcoming that poverty spirit. I've seen God break his back off my life. It comes every now and then trying to sneak back and I refuse. That spirit of distraction, of deceitfulness of riches. I, I've seen that too. You know, look at what I've done. Look at what I've built. Look at what I have. Less by the grace of God, I have nothing. But by the grace of God, I could be eating out of a trash can right now. I can't let what I have have me. I can't let the deceitfulness of riches run and ruin my life. These things choke out the word. The last category Jesus talks about is seed that fell on good ground. Seed that took root and brought forth harvest. Again, some 30 fold, some 60 fold, and some 100 fold. Again, I declare that the fold that's unfolded in your life is solely based on your application of that seed, which is the word. Now, I, I think I heard Mike Murdoch say this, great man of God, Dr. Mike Murdoch. Y'all continue to pray for him. He's uh, had some battles in his health, but he's still here. And uh, I praise God for keeping him. He's a, he's a blessing to the body. But um, I heard him say once that you can eat your seed, but you can sow your seed. I was like, what are you talking about? And then I, I realized one day I needed something from God. And um, somebody gave me $100. Somebody gave it to me. I, 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 I have a job. I work. But somebody wanted to bless me with $100. And I immediately heard the Holy Ghost say, that's not yours. <laughs> and I began to say in my ignorance, the devil is a liar. Satan the Lord of you. Now, that was the Holy Ghost talking. And I know some of us have rebuked the devil when God was talking. The devil will never tell you to sow. Can I tell you how to differentiate in those times when you hear something tell you to see? The devil don't tell you to sow. Now, he will deceive you because you don't sow your mortgage money. You don't sell your B, sow your BGE money. No, we ought to have good integrity. I mean, I was silly like that at one point. You know, giving my mortgage money out to the church and all those things. Now, if God tell me to, I will. You better bet it. Me and my wife will come in agreement. And if God tell us to and there's a witness, we'll sow our, our mortgage money. Uh, we've done it before and God showed us how. Because if God asks a seed of you, he's ready to give you a harvest. <laughs> i tell you real quick, there was one time I sold, we were renting a house. And there was one time I sold uh, the rent because God told me to. I didn't know why. I'm like, okay. Okay, I sold the rent and I happened to have enough to pay uh, the rent when it came in the next month and double. But I got word that same month that the owner of the house that we were renting wanted to sell it and he had a buyer ready to buy it now. Can I tell you, me and my wife had two days to move. I mean, I, I am not lying, literally. So we're pulling on every resource we can try to figure what are we going to do we asked him for more time and um he didn't give us more time because the person was ready to put down more money uh than the house was actually worth and the, uh, the owner said i'm sorry i know i'm inconveniencing you but i need this money so we had two days to move so the lord spoke to my wife start packing this is true story start packing stuff up so we got newspapers. She started wrapping glasses and putting them in a box. And we didn't know where in the world we could go. Couldn't move in with parents because my siblings younger than me were still there. They wouldn't know where to go. Um, nowhere. Couldn't move back with my, my, my wife's parents because there was nobody 
um, uh, that, that left the house, there was nowhere to go. So here we are, two small children. Actually, my wife was pregnant <laughs> with my youngest son. Jonathan was about five years old, my oldest son. And the Lord uh, told my wife to start packing. I went out driving around trying to find some place to live. Happened to come across this house. Up to then, we'd never been homeowners. I came across this house with a sign, say it for sale. I heard the Holy Ghost distinctly say, go knock on the door and ask the man, can you buy his house? Little did I know he had a sale in hand that fell through. Him and his wife were frustrated, angry. And um, I knocked on the door, he came to the door and said, can I help you? I said, yes, sir. I'd like to buy your house. I ain't have no mortgage. I ain't have the first round sent to my name to put down a down payment, but I believe God. I obeyed God. And let me just tell you this, make a long story short. As he was moving out, we were moving in. <laughs> There's other parts of the story, but this part I'm gonna tell you because I obeyed God. See, God can reserve the right to tell you to sow a mortgage payment, to sow a rent payment, but he gotta tell you because that money belongs to your mortgagee. That money belongs to your landlord. You can't just indiscriminately take your rent money or mortgage money if God don't tell you. But God was proving my wife and I, and we moved to our first house that we bought. And everything we needed was miraculously supplied because of that seed. Now that was a God said moment, but you gotta do what God tells you. And again, based on how you apply the word, which is the seed, will determine the harvest you get. 30 fold, 60 fold, or the wonderful 100 fold. Listen, I want that 100 fold every time I sow, and I'm not gonna cut myself short. So beloved, my main point from this text is simply stated that the word of God is a seed. And we have to be careful where and how we sow it, where and how we apply it. Based on how we sow is how we receive. I want you to get hungry for the hundredfold. Did you hear me what I said? I want you to get hungry. I'm gonna say it like Les Miles said, hungry. <laughs> oh God, hungry. I want you to get hungry for that hundredfold return. I don't want nothing less. I don't want pittance when I put all my faith in God. And guess what I'm gonna tell you? He don't have pity for you. He has his level best. So beloved, I pray that you receive this today. Do not let the word of God when it is sown fall by the wayside. Do not let the word of God when it is sown uh, fall among stony places. Do not let the word of God when it is sown fall among thorns. Let it fall on the fertile ground of a willing and ready heart and receive it. Receive it. Oh glory. Receive it in Jesus' name and let it bring a harvest. I'm talking to somebody right now. God has told you to sow. God has told you to obey. God has told you to do what he told you to do. And you have received an instruction from God. And I will say specifically what the Holy Ghost is telling you. It's been over two months ago. The Lord told you to do something and you have neglected. You have logicized. I coined that word, your way out of it. And God is saying, do what I told you to do. Great deliverance is going to come to your life because of your obedience. Now that was from the Holy Ghost. I don't know who I'm talking to. He didn't tell me. He just said to say that. And I will not disobey God. So if it's you, I want to hear the testimony of how you sow. Where you going to sow? That's God already told you what to do. So you obey God. And I guarantee, as a man of God, the harvest God has for you will come. I'm telling you that. But you got to obey God. That is the action that every time we hear the word, the seed of the word is sown. That is the action we are to take. Obey God. Father, I've done what you told me. I've declared the word. And I speak to you, Lord, get the glory. Get the glory. 
We bind every work of darkness. We bind every work of the spirit of the prince of Persia, every Leviathan and Python spirit, every principality that seeks to stand in the way of our harvest. Get out of the way. The blood of Jesus is against you. We curse you in the name of Jesus. You foul spirit, get out of the way. We cast you into outer darkness. I don't care if you're a ruling principality. Get out of the way. You're out of place. You don't belong. Blocking the blessing of the seed sower and the harvest of the receiver. Father God, let your blood prevail. Let your word manifest. And Lord, you arise. Oh, Rabbi Shekhi. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, I feel the Holy Ghost. Let your blood prevail. And God, you arise. And every enemy be scattered. I thank you for the seed. This day of this word falling on good ground. In Jesus' name. Let there be hundredfold return hundredfold blessings because people obey your word in Jesus name. Amen. Beloved, I got to go. I got to go. But um, if you're not saved, if you don't know Jesus, what does it mean to be saved? The Bible says you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. You believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead. You're saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. With the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Ah, I feel the Holy Ghost. Confession is made unto salvation. Obey God and get into a good church where you can be taught the word and you can receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Some people don't receive the Holy Ghost because they don't know they can receive him. He's a gift. Okay. You don't have to say G, 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 G. I know I'm going against some tradition, but you know, we need to go against some tradition because God never said say G, 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 G. He never said say hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. That's not what the Lord said. He said, receive ye the Holy Ghost. Jesus in John's gospel, when he appeared to the disciples in their upper room, breathed on them and said, receive. You don't have to beg for a gift. Receive, receive, receive. So you need to get in a good church to hear that. Life Builders Church is here for you. We take people virtually because of the season we're in. Some are not comfortable. Come back to church, we're not compromising. I can sit up here and fuss all day about the stadium full church I'll be full, which is true. You ought to be in the church. Basketball's full, you know, but I'm coming to you. Turn your computer on, receive the word, become a part of the church. And when we are able to, we'll come together and it won't be virtual. We'll be live and in person. And we'll fellowship together. Well, beloved, we love you. If you are wanting more, talk to somebody Tell us that you've given your heart to Jesus. We have a phone number, 443-776-0255. actually 443-776-0255. Get that and use it. Email lbcministry at yahoo.com lbc ministry singular at yahoo.com that's our email we answer the phone we answer the email if the phone is busy somebody will call you back we'll leave your number and your name and we'll call you back also beloved we have our website lbcbaltimore.org lbcbaltimore.org and that's our website Take advantage of those things and let God arise and every enemy be scattered. You be blessed today and you take care to not let your seed lay by the wayside, fall among thorns, or fall on rocks so you can bring forth a harvest 100 fold in Jesus' name. Amen. We love you. Enjoy this music as we go. God bless you. Thank you.